Holy egg-laying bunny, Batman. There sure are a lot of Easter eggs in DC movies. It may feel daunting to consider them all, but I've collected the best ones worth knowing. Yes! Like, did you know Barry Allen mentions he's fluent in gorilla sign language during one scene in Justice League? Looks like we're getting a gritty postmodern Gorilla Grodd movie soon, I guess. Plus, the next time this film inevitably gets played on effects for the millionth time, you could flex this neat bit of trivia. I didn't pay a lot of attention to Suicide Squad. However, I did notice a small detail here when Deadshot is staring into the window of this department store. If you're a Watchmen fan, I know you see it. Yep, that's the smiley face the comedian wears in their comic series. I can only hope this Easter egg means something. The best part is, this isn't the only Watchmen reference in the DCEU. This billboard in Dawn of Justice says, The end is nigh. I get that's a basic saying, but Rorschach carries around a sign that says that. It can't be a coincidence. I'm telling you, the execs were planning something big before changing plans. Okay, yes, there was a Green Lantern movie already. But even Ryan Reynolds wants to pretend that train wreck of a film doesn't exist. I want a new Green Lantern movie so badly, so I scoured for Green Lantern hints a lot in my research. It turns out Carol Ferris, aka Star Sapphire, is already in the wider DCEU. She is a pilot with a small role in Man of Steel. Seriously, guys, this debut is a blink, and you'll miss it in a moment. Ferris isn't the best known romantic interest in the DC fandom, and it might explain why so many of us missed this one the first time we watched this movie. Suppose you only know Joker from his numerous cinematic cameos. In that case, you might think he's a soulless maniac who treats grunts like a renewable resource. I'm not saying you're wrong, generally. However, it turns out I missed an iconic character that shows up in Suicide Squad. For those of you who don't know this guy next to Mr. J, meet Johnny Frost. Frost is one of the only henchmen in Joker stories to get a name. He even has an origin story. Basically, Frost is the right-hand man for the Joker that doesn't become disposable at any point. I think this Easter egg makes Suicide Squad a bit better. Say what you want, it adds more to Joker's lore. Oh yeah, we're getting nerdy, but not the traditional kind of nerdy. We're getting orchestral nerdy. Hans Zimmer, the keyboardist from the Video Killed the Radio Star music video, provided a brilliant score for Batman Begins. However, I am willing to bet most fans never bothered to look at this movie's track list. As I said, it takes a big music fan to find this one out. It turns out, sandwiched between three tracks in the beginning and three tracks in the end, are six songs. The first letter in those songs' names ends up spelling Batman. That's it! And the list, guys, we've peaked. Okay, we didn't really. Stick around, there's a lot more coming. Joker ended up stirring a lot of controversies back in a simpler time. I'm not taking a side on that discussion for this video, but I do want to bring up some great Easter eggs in the movie. There's one connection to my favorite graphic novel, The Killing Joke, that I had to include. Arthur Fleck stands by a weather-worn mural in this set photo. Notice the name on that mural. It says, Amusement Mile. This wonderfully terrible carnival Joker buys in The Killing Joke is also named Amusement Mile. It turns out the neighborhood is a familiar stomping ground for Fleck in the film to honor the best Joker origin story ever printed. The editing in this Steppenwolf origin story is super quick. Hopefully the Snyder Cut clarifies what we were watching here, but there's a crucial moment. Obviously, this is the Lantern Corps helping in the fight, but I think most of us were too busy identifying the Olympians to notice this lantern ring fly away right here. It's not hard to spot this Easter egg, but tell your friends this is the ring that eventually goes to Hal Jordan. I can't prove that, but it's my theory, and I so want it to be true. There are multiple Lantern Corps members there, so it's not hard to believe the ring flies to Jordan's predecessor. This myth feels old as time. There are still New Yorkers that swear a large crocodile lives in the sewers beneath the city. I want that to be true, but that also caused some confusion with this short piece of dialogue. Blake's here talking to Bruce, and he makes an offhanded comment about giant crocodiles in the sewer. Yes, many people think he's talking about the myth, but it's Killer Croc. DC fans know that Croc is the living embodiment of that myth. We see him in Suicide Squad, but Croc was way less popular when this movie came out. This Easter egg was cool back in the day. You live in the DC Universe. There's a prison break at the jail you stand guarding. Who do you call? You have a ton of options, but I love this moment in Justice League. The guard decides to call Batman, but look at his phone app right there. That red phone looks basic to the average viewer, but it's an Easter egg. Back in the 60s, there was a fantastic version of Batman that a new generation of fans is totally missing out on. 
Adam West Batman could be reached by the Bat Phone, a bright red rotary phone, just like the one featured in that phone app. The New 52 was DC's attempt to reinvigorate the comic universe for the first time since the crisis on Infinite Earths. To this day, fans still argue about whether or not the New 52 run of comics worked or not. Regardless, the number is a staple to DC content, and it appears in Man of Steel. I tend to look away during scenes like this. I hate watching little kids get bullied when I know they can beat up the bullies. But I did notice this one mean kid wearing a jacket that has a patch that says 52. And you know every hardcore DC fan did the Leo meme when they saw it. You know who Bob Kane is. Every Batman film made gives credit to him for creating the Cape Crusader. Unfortunately, a lot of fans don't know the name Jerry Robinson. He's the original inker and artist for the Batman comics. Robinson is best known for breathing life into two characters, Robin and the Joker. In Birds of Prey, Harley is trying to convince Roman that she can find the diamond he's looking for. She talks about a lewd photo of Eleanor Roosevelt she found for Joker. But did you ever notice she says she found it at Robinson Park? Yep, it's a tribute to this brilliant artist. So cool. Be warned, this one may give you a headache, but stick with me, alright? So, there's a guest on Murray Live named Ethan Chase. On the surface, it feels like just a name, but it's so much more. Ethan Chase is a special Easter egg Todd Phillips had to add to his movie. Ethan Chase is Zach Galifianakis' character in Due Date, another Todd Phillips film. You might also recall that Galifianakis voices the Joker in the Lego Batman films. So in a way, there are two Jokers in this movie. It's a long trip for a short drink of water, but you get it. I can't help but marvel at every Alex Ross illustration that exists. The way he brings comic characters to life will never go out of style. It embodies so much of their character in only a frame. I say all this, but there are still so many people that don't know his work. Take a look at this artwork by Ross. Oh, what's that? It looks familiar? Hmm. Maybe that's because this scene from Suicide Squad directly references it. You know, I think that says a lot about Alex Ross. There's a lot of powerful imagery in cinematography, but no one makes art like him. Hey, at least they honored his work. Hmm, not sure if this Dark Knight moment is more Easter egg or more subtle wink. I guess they're sort of the same thing at the end of the day. Anyways, in the traditional comic book lore, Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face after Maroney's grunt splashes acid on his face. The tragedy happens during a court hearing. The badass moment where Harvey stops the assassin in court is actually a send-up to this moment. Nolan wanted all the fanboys in the audience to freak out and think Two-Face was about to meet his destiny that instant. Good thing everyone loved the change in backstory instead. One of the cooler scenes in Man of Steel is the oil rig accident when Clark is forced to use his powers and save some of the workers. He collapses and lands in the ocean. This beautiful moment when the whales swim by is powerful imagery. For a long time, fans assumed that it was a direct reference to Aquaman. It turns out, we were right, you guys. In Aquaman, Orm attempts to explain to Arthur why he plans on invading the surface world. He talks about the way they destroy the environment. Doesn't that rig look like the one in Man of Steel? It's not the connection we hoped for, but I'm counting it. There are a ton of blink and you'll miss it moments in the Zod battle during Man of Steel. Fans know about the poster that reads, Keep Calm and Call Batman. Yet we all miss this super important DC character reference. Right as Clark flies up the skyscraper, the company Blaze Comics hides in the background. What is Blaze Comics? It's the publishing company in charge of collecting and distributing the stories of Booster Gold. This 25th century superhero uses a futuristic suit to become a hero in the past. Obviously, we're not getting Booster Gold in a movie anytime soon. But it's nice to know that the team at DCEU cares about more than the main roster. And those are 15 Easter eggs hidden within the DCEU. Easter eggs are always fun, aren't they? It's like a little cherry on top of the film that rewards you for just being a fan. Like seeing Joe Chill in Watchmen or that Spider-Man 3 poster in The Dark Knight. Which reminds me of the dancing Spider-Man scene reference in Into the Spider-Verse. Wow, see? It's all connected. Gotta love that nerd brain. But anyway, I have been enjoying the less interconnected approach to the DCEU. It's keeping things loose and centered on characters we love rather than trying to hit monumental moments. I know a lot of these easter eggs interconnect the characters. Still, at least I'm not forced to investigate every license plate they show. Unless... Crap, I'll be back, I gotta watch these again. <laughs>